little bit first about the James Webb telescope. I know I was reading up a little bit about it and they said it's a lot bigger than the famous Hubble one. So this has to be massive. <laughs> yeah, the, the James Webb Space Telescope is more ambitious and amazing than uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. We often talk about it like it's the successor to Hubble, but it is so much more than the Hubble Space Telescope. The mirror itself is about 21 feet across. Uh, that's in comparison to Hubble's mirror, which is more like eight feet across. And the bigger the mirror, the uh, better we're able to see faint objects in the distant universe. So JWST will get us um, basically, a, a JWST will reach depths that are a hundred times fainter than the Hubble Space Telescope. So the image that you see behind me here is the dip, deepest. So the image you see behind me here is the deepest image that Hubble has ever taken of the night sky. And JWST will be able to see objects that are a hundred times fainter than the faintest objects in this image. And it will do so at higher spatial resolution. So we'll see even more exquisite detail on objects in the distant universe. Wow. And this launch that they said this month, do you know the exact date of the launch? The launch happened on Christmas day, actually. Oh, it did happen. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah the, the launch happened um, in the early morning hours of Christmas day um, mm. from uh, French Guiana. Actually, it was, it was sent up at, from the European spaceport and uh, everything went off perfectly uh, without a hitch. So we're really grateful for that. So JWST is now on its way to its eventual, it's on its way to a, its eventual location at what we call L2, which is about four times the distance of the moon from earth. So it's, it's a bit far out there. Yeah. You know, in comparison, Hubble Space Telescope is in orbit around mm -hmm. the earth. And so, um, as a, a, a telescope that has been orbiting Earth, we can actually service it. Right. Whereas James Webb Space Telescope, we're not actually going to be able to go there mm -hmm. to uh, maintain it over time. So it's been really high stakes um, during this launch because we're we're just we we won't be able to touch it after launch. So so right. the lead up to Christmas Day was quite nerve wracking. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to talk about, or even you know, just before the launch, but just the research that you've been doing as far as your project leading up to this, that kind of, um, I guess, launched you to be able to now work with this telescope. Tell me just a little bit about that leading up to it. Yeah, our, uh, the entire field of astronomy has been anxiously awaiting JWST for not just years, but decades. Um, and one of the main goals of JWST is to take pictures of the universe when it was extremely young, just mm -hmm. a couple hundred million years after the Big Bang. Now that sounds like a long period of time, a couple hundred million <laughs> years, but it's actually um, most of the age of the universe. Um, it, so, so sorry, um, the, the um, universe is, we think 13.8 billion years old. And we have a tremendous uh, ability as astronomers to take pictures of the past as we point towards objects further and further away. That's because the speed of light is finite. So as we look at more and more distant objects, we are able to see the universe as it was in the past. So what we're trying to answer with JWST are the ultimate origin questions of the entire universe, not just where our planet Earth came from, but also where stars came from, where galaxies are formed, uh, and how the universe itself is structured at very early times. Nice, very interesting for sure. And um, would you say, um, as far as the goals that you guys have, I know you kind of just said finding the origin, but is there anything else that you guys are really um, have goals for with looking at this telescope? Because not everyone astronomer gets to use it. Right. Yeah, we're extremely lucky to be able to use JWST in its first year um, to do really ambitious projects. So what 
we're trying, oh, sorry, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, right, whatever. Okay. Um, one, one thing we're trying to do with JWST in particular is not just find the first stars and galaxies that turned on. Um, that is one primary goal of JWST is to find the most distant objects ever found. But we want to do more than that. We want to find those galaxies and find thousands of them and then understand how they relate to one another in the large scale structure of the universe. If you zoom out to the largest scales beyond what humans can possi possibly fathom, the universe looks like a giant sponge. And mm -hmm. so there are filaments, there are voids uh, connecting groups of thousands of galaxies. And we want to see that for the first time in the universe's first billion years. Yeah. And how much time do you have with the, well, how much time, I guess, did you have? <laughs> well, or, yeah, no, we, we yeah, it went. hasn't, it hasn't been executed first, but right. uh, yeah, so, so uh, my team has about nine days worth of time to stare at deep space with JWST. And what we're trying to do is to find the most distant galaxies that have ever been found mm -hmm. and over a scale that hasn't been done before. We are looking at a patch of sky that's roughly the size of three full moons. So it's actually a sizable chunk of sky. Uh, in contrast, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which is the image behind me, is about the size of just the head of a pin if you're holding that pin at arm's length. So it's really, really small. So we want to have a JWST deep field that is enormous. And, and to do that, um, only Webb can do that. Hubble, Hubble can't quite get us there because it's not big enough. Right. And just the process, I'm sure it was excitement with your team when you guys got news of this, because how does that process work for those who don't know? I know you were doing research beforehand. Is that submitted? Then you have to get accepted. How does that work? Yeah, the, pro the process of getting your project approved for observation time on JWST is very difficult and rigorous. So my team and I were working for months before a deadline. Uh, the deadline was actually two days before Thanksgiving in 2020. So it was a stressful time for everyone. Um, and we just, we had many, many, many Zooms <laughs> to discuss the, the science case that we were trying to make. And what you have to do, if you want telescope time, anyone in the world can apply for JWST telescope time. What you have to do is convince a panel of astronomers, for us, it's our peers, uh, mm -hmm. that your, uh, the, the scientific questions you're trying to ask about the origins of the universe mm -hmm. are going to be answered in the observations that JWST can take. It's mm -hmm. very hard when you serve on a um, committee like this. I've, I've been on the other end of it too with Hubble Space Telescope. You have to decide out of hundreds and hundreds of proposals, what is the most compelling project to put on the telescope? Is it going to be searching for gases in uh, the atmospheres of Earth-like planets around other stars? Or is it going to be the search for the first galaxies in the universe. It's really hard to compare apples and oranges, but that's what these committees had to do. And in the at the end of the day, we were very lucky to get time. Wow. And what was that reaction like? Were you guys, I know obviously you had to be proud of the work that you put in, but even just paving that forward, especially for uh, UT people, Texans and other astronomers in this area who want to be in your position. Yeah. It's, it's actually incredible. Here at UT Austin, we have earned about 10% of all of the telescope time on JWST in its first year. So 10% of the time on the telescope is led by researchers here at UT Austin. And um, it's been an incredible experience. It feels really um, great to be at an institute uh, that serves the population of the state of Texas. And we're really eager to get uh, lots of students involved in this project, um, both undergraduate students, graduate students, and the public. 
Um, my colleague, Steve Finkelstein as well is, is deeply involved in many JWST projects. And so we can't wait to really involve the community here in Austin and in Texas in these projects. Nice. Now, when does this, so when does it officially start and everything and all that? <laughs> yeah, JWST is currently in the process of uh, unfolding or after, okay, JWST is in the process of unfolding after its launch. It was actually folded up like a piece of origami in the head of the rocket um, when it was launched uh, on December 25th. And um, that's the only way it could fit in the rocket. So mm -hmm. it's now on this complicated journey um, to a destination a million miles from Earth, and it is slowly unfolding itself. Um, it's a series of steps that will take approximately a month. And then after that month is over, it's time to test all of the cameras and test all of the equipment and make sure everything works. Some of the cameras actually have to be cooled to incredibly cold temperatures. Um, and that process of cooling the instruments takes about uh, five to six months. So we think the first observations will be taken about six months from now in June or July in the summer. Wow, so it's a long process. <laughs> it is, it is. Just to get the answers, yeah. okay. And let me see if there was anything else. Um, I think that was basically it. I feel like we touched on a lot. Was there anything else that you wanted to add or? I don't think so. I mean, um, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, but well, I just wanted to get, different, but <laughs> yeah, I wanted to kind of just get a little bit of the before and yeah. then now, and then where you guys are at moving forward. But now I guess six months looking forward to yeah, yeah. Seeing it's, what it's, answers I mean, you can we have get. been waiting for this for uh, we have been waiting for this for over 20 years, I, as long as I've been a professional astronomer. So it's really surreal to know that JWST has actually launched at this point. Um, and we're well on our way to getting data. So six months is a drop in the bucket 